Okay, as promised, I'm taking up the unit test that I've posted for you on my PB Work site. If you haven't been there already, you should probably stop this video and go download it and give it a try on your own. Um, there's nothing like practice to make things perfect, right? So let's uh, go go back and come back when you've uh, when you've done the test. Okay, so I'm just gonna cover up the answers here while we move along. So first question, it said given f equals this and g equals this state the domain of f plus g so here's the solution here what you're looking for again is what are the overlapping x coordinates that's all just look for the ones that are the same this one doesn't have these ones aren't in both we only have the minus one the zero and the four so there's your domain very simple but if you don't know what you're doing it means you're losing a mark right off the start and getting flustered right so what's f plus g? So if I know this is the domain, all I have to do now is go back and add the y coordinates for minus one, for x is minus one, zero, and four. So just add them up and you would get minus one, minus two, zero, six, and four, two. What's f minus g at negative one? Okay, so this is telling you the x coordinate is minus one and it's asking me to subtract the y coordinate of the function f from the g. So I look to minus 1, so I want f minus g, so that's 0 minus minus 2 is plus 2. What's g times f when x is 0? Okay, you need to know how to read these things, right? If you can't read it, you won't know what to do. So at 0, we have 5 and 1. For our y coordinates, so multiply them together and you get 5. f negative 1, ooh, at minus 3. Okay, so it wants to know what is the inverse at minus 3. So I need to know where do I have minus 3 for my y coordinate for the function f. This isn't a multiplication or anything. So I only have to look up here. So when the y coordinate is minus 3, that would be here. So that means that x would be 4. 4 minus 3 becomes minus 3 and 4. Right? So this is going to be minus 3, 4 when I do the inverse operation. So my answer is going to be 4. Okay, number two, if f of x equals 4x plus 5 and gx equals x squared minus 7, that looks pretty similar to what we did just in the last lesson, write the defining equation for g minus f. Okay, so this is g and I'm subtracting x, or f, sorry. So that means I have x squared minus 7 minus 4x plus 5. Now remember, minus a minus, right? So x squared minus 4x minus 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 12. Okay, what's the inverse of the function f when x is minus 2? So in order to do that, I, I don't know what the inverse is, so I have to evaluate that. So see here I said um, I changed the coordinates. So if x is equal to 4x plus 5, or sorry, y equals 4x plus 5, then x is equal to 4y plus 5. So 4y equals x minus 5 divided by 4. You get x over 4 minus 5 over 4. So that would be, that would be your inverse, right? So f minus 1x equals x over 4 minus 5 over 4. And it wants to know what is that equal to when x is minus 2, and I get minus 7 quarters. Now, this one is one that my students struggled with on their test. Maybe you will too. This is understanding the properties of different functions. So you're given all these parent functions. So I've done a little sketch of each one beside it. And that, that might be a good thing for you to do if you have such a question on your test so that you can remember what they look like. So we have the absolute value function, linear, absolute value, quadratic, it's x squared, the square root of x, 1 over x, 2 to the x, and the sine function. And the questions are, determine which functions have the following characteristics. So symmetry in the y-axis, i.e. even functions. 
Now the only two there would be x squared and absolute value x, right? Symmetry of even symmetry. So what's on this side is also on this side pretty much. Symmetry in the origin, an odd function. So that would be here. Let's put a y-axis on it so you can flip that around. Uh, sine x, you could rotate this as well. Symmetry in the origin. Okay, so remember that means um, about the origin. Okay, as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches 0. And as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches x. That would be your 2 to the x. See, it approaches 0 here. So that means it had an asymptote at y equals 0. And as x approaches infinity, y approaches infinity. The domain is x is greater than or equal to 0. x is an element of real numbers. Whereas the range is greater than or equal to 0. y is an element of real numbers. And that obviously is your radical function, which starts at 0, 0, like that. Okay. What does each of the following mean, assuming x is an element of real numbers? So this is testing your knowledge of round versus square brackets. So this means that x is on the interval between negative infinity to 2. It doesn't include negative infinity, but it does include 2. That's square brackets. And x is an element of minus 5, 6. It means x is between minus 5 and 6. So it includes negative 5 and 6 in the domain. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So minus 5, 2, 6. I don't know why I wrote and here. This should be the interval between minus 5 and 6. You could also write it on a number line like this if the teacher asked for a number line. And you would join it like that. Or you could say minus 5 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 6. Those all mean the very same thing. Okay. On the next page, on we go. Point 1,2 is a point on the graph of f at x. Find the corresponding mapping rule that maps f at x onto each of the following functions and then the image point of 1,2. Okay, so we're given two different mapping rules and I give you right here, I said, what is the mapping rule for this? So remember, for mapping rules, you divide by k here, so it's x over 2. The opposite sign of this, so everything backwards, right? Looks like multiplication, you divide. Looks like add, you subtract. And the y's are normal, minus 2y plus 1. So then all you have to do is plug in your x values. So a half minus 6 halves would be minus 5 halves, and minus 4 plus 3 is minus, oh, sorry, minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3. This one, um, this the teacher will always give you a tricky one like this, right? They expect you to know to factor out the coefficient here when you have x in brackets here. So I had to factor that out. And minus 1 divided by half is minus 1 times 2. So I have x minus 2. So um, dividing by half is multiplication. So that's 2x is plus 2 and 1 third y minus 2. And then you just plug in 1, 2 and you'll get those. No need to can do that. Given f at x is 1 over x now, sketch the graph of y equals f at x equals 1 over x by plotting at least 6 points. I might have changed this. Label all asymptotes on the graph with their equations. But it's always important to label asymptotes. So that was the first graph here. If you can see, um, here's 1 over x. So I used x, y, and I wrote out a bunch of points here. So I did minus 2. And 1 over minus 2 is minus a half, and so on. You can pause the video and take a check for your points. And what is the mapping rule? So mapping rule and the equation of the transformed function. So remember, this is a rule that you're going to apply to this function. It's a rule. So the 3, it could either be out front. You could write it like this, 3 times and then 1 over, and in for x you're putting in this, so that's why it's in the denominator, right? It went here, went in for x, and this is your y, it goes on the outside. So you could write it like um, I have like that, or you could write it, whoops, that's minus, like that. Okay, either that or this, this means the very same thing. Okay, so 
Um, asymptotes, you should know your asymptotes, where, you, where they are by looking at this function. So it was shifted to the left two. So that means x equals negative two, that's right here, is your vertical asymptote. Your horizontal asymptote, it was shifted down five, so zero. Subtract five, that brings it down to here. There you go. And then once you've done the mapping rule on those points, you should easily see that the graph is going to be in these two positions. Okay. You need to know how to do transformations. That was the key point of the entire grade 11 curriculum. Okay. Number seven. What happened to six? Well, that was six. Okay. Sometimes I would forget about the numbering on my test. Bad teacher. Sketch the graph of the piecewise function given below. So here we go. Remember we talked about these. It's kind of like broken into parts for different domains. Now I, I had to change this. I guess it's probably changed on your test. This was just the one I did the solution set on. Okay, so f and x equals 3. Now people get confused about that. That's like me saying, where's y equal 3? And people have trouble with those equations. I don't know why. All y's are 3, right? That, this is y equal 3. So it's 3 if x is less than or equal to negative 2. So here's negative 2. Notice the solid circle going to the left. So that's the first part. It's x plus 5. That's a line, slope of 1, y-intercept 5. So here I put it on. Here's my y-intercept. And it goes from minus 2 open circle. So if I was to draw this, you would have seen it like this, right? It goes like this. And then to a solid circle here. So that's your pink line. Um, up to 3. So I plug in 3. 3 plus 5 is 8. So there's my coordinate here. This would be 3, 8. And it is a solid circle because it's less than or equal to. And then it's x squared minus 2 if x is greater than 3. So I want to find what is the height of the function when x is 3 and then put an open circle there. So 3 squared is 9 minus 2 is 7. So this coordinate here would be 3, 7. But it's open circle. See, open, open. It doesn't include that point. And then it's still going up. It's a quadratic. Okay, it says determine whether the function is continuous at x equals negative 2 and x equals 3 by merely looking at the graph. Explain your choice. So you would say that at minus 2, the function is continuous because um, it includes this point. So as I come from the left, it's minus 2. And as I come from the right, it would also be minus 2. So it is continuous. Um, and it's discontinuous at 3 because you see here we have this um, point, dis not a point, yeah, point discontinuity or jump discontinuity. So it goes from here down to here. So it's discontinuous at 3, continuous at minus 2. Is f a function? Give reasons for your response. Okay, so... The answer is yes, because for every value of x, there is one value for y. You might look here and say, oh, but what about this one? Well, it doesn't matter because this is an open circle and this is a closed circle. If this had been greater than or equal to 3 and you had that solid circle here, that would not be a function. But this one is. So the answer is yes, it is a function. For every value of x, there is one value for y. And the last question says, is the inverse of this a function? Now, remember, we talked about the horizontal line test. So you can see that this part of the graph here, if I did the inverse of it, this would be, so this is minus 2 and 3. So the inverse would be 3 and minus 2. Right? 2 and minus 2 it would be 3 and minus 2. And it would be... Uh, 3 and minus 3, 3 and minus 4, 3 and minus 5. So there'd be a whole bunch of, it would be going like this, right? That's its reflection about the x, the line y equals x. So the inverse, it would not be a function. This would not pass a vertical line test. Okay, 
And finally, the last question says sketch the graph of y equals minus 2 square root of 1 half x minus 4 using three key points on the parent function. If you don't know what the key points are for a function, you might want to look back to uh, the grade 11 curriculum where I did parent functions. So sketching key points for the root of x, the key points, let me just draw a little picture of it here. If I did the root of x, this is a key point where it starts. So if I wanted some key points for the root of x, I would pick 0, 0. So that would be here, 1, 1, and not 2, 4, but 4 and 2, right? Because this is the root of x. So this would be 4, 2, 1, 1. And that's enough to give you the shape. Very important to include 0, 0 because that's where the function is going to begin. And another one showing you which way it's going to go, right? You don't want to have it go in the wrong way. Okay, so this was the equation. This is the transformed equation. So I want to know what is the mapping rule. And again, we would say, well, the x is divided by a half. So that means 2x plus 4 and minus 2y. That's it. So simple. Once you get the hang of, of the transformation rules and the mapping rules, it's really easy to do any transformation. So then I plugged in my value x is 0, I get 4, y is 0, it's 0, 6 and minus 2, 12 and minus 4, and I sketched it over here. So here it is, it's going like this, so I knew where it started, and I've got it going down like this. Now, you, this is, like I said, this is an important critical point. You can see also from the transformations, if I asked you to explain them, what are the transformations? That would be a good question as well just to make sure you, you know them all. The first one would be that it's reflected, right? It's a reflection, that's why it's negative. Reflection about the x-axis. So you can see my function that was going this way, then it started going this way, that's my reflection. And the two, what does the two tell you? It tells you it's a vertical stretch by a factor of two by a factor of two, and then we look to the factor of two, we look to the half here, that has to do with the x coordinates, so it's a horizontal, and we're dividing by half, so that's times two, so it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of two, by a factor of two, that was handy. And then the four here, it's four units, so these are all horizontal, anything to do with x, horizontal shift, right, four units. Okay, so that's pretty much all a teacher could ask you about transformations and sketching this graph. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much a, a decent first practice test for your chapter one. I hope you do well. Let me know how it goes. And don't forget to subscribe, please. Thank you. Bye.